Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be talking about my fragrance collection as of 2021. I have done this video last year almost on the exact same date. I've done it on the 18th of January and this year I'm doing it on the 17th. So within one year, how has my collection changed? If you want to see last year's videos, I'm going to link it up here and also in the description box. Um, you will see it was much smaller. I also at that time was like in London so I had you know a limited amount of fragrances with me in London but yeah nevertheless I think it is a super super cool video to do I've just counted them I filmed a few clips just before just to show you how I store my fragrances usually so this is kind of how I normally store my fragrance it just has its own little shelf within my wardrobe and as you can see and as I said in that video that I did at the beginning of the year I'm already running out of space like there's fragrances below there um, just like you know samples and uh, yeah it's it's really kind of getting out of hand but this is how I store it I have my like most used current shelf here and now this one is still kind of set up as I had it in December and yeah then I have some other fragrances here and then you can just see it goes all the way in and then I have also taken all of them out and shown them to you on a little desk which was the same setup that I had in London so I just went over them with you there so here we go this is kind of a little overview and you can see in the back my makeup and the little bunny now over here we have all of my niche fragrance bottles i'm actually excited to count all of them because i don't know but you can see we have you know all the niche fragrance bottles and over here i have all my designer bottles and then here we have travel and mini sizes so you guys know i have a lot of Jo Malone minis and then also I've acquired quite a few other travel sizes and yeah now just to go back these are the designer fragrances and then over here we are moving into niche and now you may have noticed in that clip that I did not include these fragrances which you have seen in my what I got for Christmas video it is this set of Dior private line minis and yeah I cannot say too much about them yet because first of all I want to do an entire video just on those so I don't want to give too much away. If we count these which are eight fragrances I have then counted that I have 23 travel sizes which brings us to 31 mini fragrances already and then I was a little bit surprised about this one because my balance between designer and niche fragrances is one like is 50 50 so there's not one of either more which I think is really really cool and I have 15 full-size designer fragrances and 15 full-size niche fragrances but yeah now without further ado let's get started and talk about the individual fragrances if you guys love fragrance videos you want to see more of me in 2021 then definitely subscribe and yeah let's get into the fragrance collection let me know which one is your favorite out of my collection in the comments as well and yeah let's talk about fragrance now i'm going to be starting with niche fragrances i'm going to start with ones that you have seen if you have seen last year's video sorry these are rumbling um, and these are my jo malone uh, 30 ml full sizes the first one that i have is peony and blush suede it is my least used i actually got this in the beginning of 2020 with the gift voucher from the jo malone avant calendar which is a super girly um it is a super girly like just beautiful fragrance and I quite like this even though I have not used a ton of it yet. Also I'm going to try and run through these very very quickly. I have a lot of like individual videos concerning some of these fragrances so I'm not going to be spending too much time on every single one. And then the other two that I have here, this is Honeysuckle and Davana, which you can see I have used a lot of. And then my absolute favorite from the line is English Pear and Freesia and here you can see that I have used even more. Now moving on with some niche fragrances that I have spoken to you about quite a bit as well. We have Juliet Has a Gun, another oud, which is one of my favorite fragrances from Juliet Has a Gun. And also just one of my favorite like oud, oudy fragrances in general. It is super dry, has a raspberry note, and I think it's perfect if you don't want to get into those like super heavy, heavy ouds. Uh, definitely give this one a try and the, you know, the bottle is just gorgeous. Now another one you guys have heard me talk about day in day out is BDK's Gris Chanel. I'm not going to say a lot more about this but it is a beautiful like black tea fig cardamom fragrance and it is so so good. I absolutely love this and it is so unique in my collection as well. 
And another one that I have worn a lot in the winter time is Serge Luton's Ambois Vanille, which I have a full video about. But yeah, it is beautiful and definitely worth a try if you are into sort of like sweet woody vanilla fragrances. Moving on, I have one fragrance here that I have not uh, talked about or even tried a lot, and that is Oolong Infini from Atelier Cologne. And this one, to me, this is going to get more use now, because I do feel like this is sort of like a spring, like end of winter, spring kind of fragrance. We then have a very, very beautiful gourmand. This is Cheyenne Blue's Salt Caramel, which is so good it just smells to me like caramel popcorn and now a fragrance that i have mentioned once but then i think i haven't talked about it afterwards at all um so if you want to know more about this fragrance or you want me to do a full review let me know this is rhodes art addict and it is it is so interesting because it is musky it is a bit animalic but at the same time it's fruity and it is one of the like most interesting mixtures that i have in my collection so if you're interested in this one definitely let me know and then these are a bit more recent additions to my collection, which you guys will have seen if you watched my videos sort of end of November, beginning of December. And they are both from Mikalev. One of them is Watch, which is just a beautiful fragrance in one of the most beautiful bottles. This is a very, very sweet, fruity tuberose fragrance. And I actually heard that they're discontinuing the Les Exclusive line, which this is from. So if you have ever wanted to get it, get it if you still can. Um, I will link it below if I if it's still if it is still available, I will link it below. And then the other one from Mikalev is of course the very, very hyped uh Ylang in Gold, which is another just gorgeous fragrance, and the scent of this is just magical. And now my last three niche fragrances, and I think I've actually miscounted, I think I've counted one designer as a niche, so it might be that it's 16 designer and 14 niche. Um, but one of them is this molecular fragrance, Molecule 01, which I talked a little bit about in one of my recent videos. It is molecular, so it develops differently on everyone, and by itself it's not my absolute favorite. Uh, we then have Santal 33, which I love. This one is so beautiful. This one was part of the Liberty advent calendar and then the final one that we have here is probably one of the most unique fragrances in my collection and it is Jasmin et Cigarette from Etat Libre d'Orange and this one is a ja like smoky literally like cigarette smoke jasmine fragrance I have to mix this with a little bit of another white flower otherwise the smoke comes on my skin a little bit too strong I would say now moving into my designer fragrances we are going to start with the house that is just it has my heart I love it the most and if you have watched almost any of my videos you will know that Dior is just on a different level for me um, I showed you in the beginning the private line that I'm trying out now, but my signature scent for years and years and years has been J'adore. I have an entire video on this one as well. You can see it is very, very heavily used and I'm kind of saving the last bit of this one until I get a backup of it. But yeah, J'adore is my absolute favorite. But I have also more recently um, added new Dior fragrances to my collection and the ones that I have so far, and I'm, I swear to you I will get more, I know myself, um, it's just a beautiful house. You saw this one a little bit. Um, this is Dior's Addict. Uh, it's a beautiful fragrance, especially in the winter time. I love wearing this, it is so warm and luxurious and like just kind of smells opulent and I absolutely adore this. And then one of the and I think a lot of people like this. This is one of the like sexier fragrances out there. Um, this one is Hypnotic Poison. This is an eau de toilette, but it is super strong and it is this almond vanilla scent that's absolutely gorgeous. So continuing on, this one I've spoken about a lot as well. I think I also have a full video about this one. This is Marc Jacobs Decadence, which is a like sweet plum and like very out there very loud fragrance which i absolutely love like for any event or anything where you need a lot of confidence this one is your go-to and then i also have mark jacobs daisy which i love the first time that i smelt it but now i have to say given all the other fragrances that i have i haven't been wearing this as much as i thought i would um, but maybe in the spring summer i do feel like this is more of a spring summer scent and i think i got it towards the end of the summer now with these designer fragrances i'm really going along the houses that i have the next are the narciso rodriguez fragrances that i have this one is the narciso eau de toilette 
And this one is Narciso Rodriguez for Her, the Eau de Parfum. I have an entire video comparing the two, so I will link that as well. But uh, yeah, both are very musky, beautiful fragrances. This one is a little bit more out there, it is a bit more of like a badass boss kind of vibe. And then this one is a bit more, you know, like floral and lighter musky. And now we have like individual houses where I have one fragrance from. One of my favorites you guys know is Chloe. And I haven't used this as much as I used to when I had my first bottle of this. And that is honestly just because I have so many fragrances now that this one is not getting the love it deserves. But it is one of the most recognizable fragrances that I have. I recognize this on anyone. If if you walk past me with this fragrance on, I will know that you're wearing Chloe. And it is such a good scent and loved by so many and with very good reason. I adore it as well. Then we have a newer addition to my collection that I've barely worn. Um, it is Lancome's La Nuit Tresor Nude, which I thought was going to be a bit different than it is. But it has these very nice coconut and vanilla notes together with some rose. But it is still very very sweet so in the winter this was not my go-to but i feel like i will get a lot more wear out of it throughout the year and the same sort of goes for and this one has become one of my favorites already i have recommended it time and time again i think it was in my christmas gift guide this one is Guerlain's terracotta le parfum and it is a beautiful like tropical tiare flower Okay, I do think I need to speed up a little bit because I still have all of the like travel sizes staring at me to be uh, mentioned as well. We have Elisab's Girl of Now, which I thought was going to be a bit different than it is. This is a beast mode fragrance on me this last 13 hours easily. It is a very like sweet pistachio sort of orange blossom amber kind of fragrance. Then this one you guys will have probably seen. This is one of the um, fragrances that I've reviewed in a video that has gotten you know a lot of like hype and um, yeah I think this you know just the bottle of this is amazing. This is Flora Botanica by Balenciaga. I've adored the bottle. This one was my first blind buy ever and I love this one. And I cannot wait to break this out again in the springtime. For me, this sort of like rosy green wasn't a winter scent, but I cannot wait to break this out again. And then we have a fragrance that I have not chosen for myself. If you guys have seen my first ever collab, which was with Paola Bianca, who's another great reviewer, um, we have done a sort of scent swap in a sense. And she picked Olympia Aqua for me, which is like this ambery ginger salty kind of fragrance which again i think this will be so beautiful for the springtime i got it in the fall and i said it will be great for the fall time and then i didn't end up using it because actually with the ginger and the salt it is a bit fresher than i initially thought so yeah i think this will get more wear this year and now my final three designer fragrances this one i don't need to say anything about uh, anymore this is sarah's rich warm addictive which is one of my absolute favorites it looks like i never use it but i actually use this so much um so yeah i'm kind of upset that it doesn't show how much i use it um this one is one that i haven't spoken about in a while but i think this was in last year's video as well this is granado's fantastico circo and this one is a fragrance that i picked up in brazil you can see i've used a lot of it already and this one is so beautiful i think I, I will do a video just about this one because it is one of the greatest fragrances that i have smelled and it's i think it's a really unknown brand um here at least and then the final designer fragrance is of course ariana grande's cloud i've spoken about this every now and again i think i've had, definitely in my dupes video i have um but yeah it is a beautiful fragrance kind of similar to baccarat rouge 540 and yeah once again you can see that i have used quite a bit of this and now for the final part of the video, we are quickly going to be going through my travel sizes. Now the first few that I have here are all from Uniku, which is a fragrance subscription service, which is really cool. I filmed an entire video just on, you know, their offering, so you can check that out. But here I have Inicio's Addictive Vibration, which I've used a little bit out of. I have Simona Andreoli Don't Ask Me Permission, which I haven't used that much of so far. In this one we have Zerzhov's Accento and from this one again not the most used so far but my very favorite if you've seen that video is definitely this one. This is Olfactive Studio Still Life in Rio and I've used a lot of it and I will continue to do so because this is the perfect like spring summer scent and I've even worn this in the winter just to sort of like brighten up days for me. I love this one. 
Now these ones again, these are all the Zara Joe Loves fragrances that I still have. I've given one away to my boyfriend, one away to my mom, and one of them broke. But I still have Fleur de Patchouli, which I barely use. I have Vetiver Pumple Mousse, which is my absolute favorite, and I'm looking, I'm kind of saving the rest of this because I'm looking to get a full size. I have Bohemian Bluebells, which is interesting because it smells like dark chocolate and lavender. Um, I have Tuberose Noir, which I thought I would be wearing a bit more in the winter, which I haven't, but it is a beautiful scent. I love this. And then I still have Amalfi Sunray, which is a very summery fragrance. I'm now going to show you all the fragrances that sort of don't have an association or which I don't have multiples from a brand before going over all of my little Jo Malone ones. I have this little Baccarat Rouge 540. My history with Baccarat Rouge, I think, is very prominent on this channel, but I am loving it now. And I've used a bit, but I also try to kind of save it as well, because I'm not sure <laughs> if I want to shell out the money for a full size right now. Um, then we have Rituals Eau d'Orient, which you guys, again, have seen if you've seen my Rituals video. This one is my favorite of the women's that I have. And I've received a lot of good recommendations from you guys for new fragrances to try out from them, which is something that I'm looking forward to do as soon as I can get my hands on them. Now, this one is a scent that I haven't used a lot so far. It is Electric Rhubarb by Floral Street, which is a very, very good scent, but it is definitely a spring-summer scent. It is very, like, sour through the rhubarb, so it wasn't really something that I've worn a lot um, since I got it. Then we have Ex Nihilo Fleur Narcotique, which you know is my, I think I said this was my second or third favorite from the brand, but I think as well that this is going to be great in the springtime. And then the final one, and this one is another one where I have a full review on the house coming up. This is uh, Wilhelm's Dear Polly. And this one is, wow, this is a very, very interesting one. Um, but I'm not gonna say too much because I have a video coming up all about Wilhelm. And now for the final part of the video, we're going to go through my Jo Malone minis and I just have to find a way to sort of place them on my lap before going into the individual ones. So what is this one? This is Old Grain Cucumber, very fresh. I do like it. It's not my absolute favorite, but it's not bad at all. Um, it's just very like fresh and really a good like daytime or even gym scent. We then have Nectarine, Blossom and Honey, which I really, really like. And I think I've told this story before. We gave this to my sister for Christmas. And then like a few days later, I was like, hmm, I actually really, really love this. I also want one. And then we had this one in the advent calendar. We have Amber and Lavender, which mm, I, this is one that I do not like. One of the very, very few actually from Jo Malone that I don't like. I think I don't like this one. And I'm not the biggest fan of Myrrh and Tonka. But then the next one that we have here is Mimosa and Cardamom. And I remember this one being very interesting. It's kind of fresh, but it's also kind of, I don't know. I think I said once that this could be either, you know, for a very, very young girl or a very mature woman. So yeah, it's a very versatile scent, that's for sure. I have two more of the mini colognes. This is Honeysuckle and Davana, which I have as backup because you guys know that I have a full size, which you've seen in the beginning. And this is Blackberry and Bay, which is a beautiful scent. I've been loving this. Last summer I was wearing this all the time and it is so tart and beautiful and it's also unlike any other fragrance that I have. And um, ah, yeah, I absolutely love Blackberry and Bay. Now for the final three, we have Jasmine, Sambac and Marigold. This one is very beautiful. I really like this. My absolute favorite, of course, is Velvet, Rose and Oud, which uh, is such a good, it's kind of like a sour but sweet rose with the Oud. And um, I think if you're getting into like rose Oud fragrances, this one is a perfect choice. And then the final one that I have is Dark Amber and Ginger Lily, which this one I don't use too much. It is a bit, um, it's a bit different from the other two. It's not too floral and um, yeah, actually I should give this more of a try. I kind of almost don't have an opinion about it because I don't even know what this smells like and there are so many other fragrances, as we've just seen, that I do wear on a day-to-day -day basis. So that was it for my fragrance collection, guys. I know that it was a very, very long one, so thank you very much if you've stuck through to the end. If you have actually stuck through, um, just incorporate into your comments somewhere like Blue Sky and then I will see that you've watched to the end, which will mean you will have my biggest gratefulness ever. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching this fragrance collection. Let me know which one was your favorite out of my fragrances. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and I cannot wait to see you in my next one. Subscribe if you haven't and until we see each other again, I hope you have a great day. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.